Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, a video on showing you how to clear up temporary files, possibly regain space, and just get rid of some of the crap which Windows tends to accumulate over time. So if you're looking at creating a bit more space on your system, or just getting rid of some files and securely removing them, then this video may be just what you're looking for. So today we're going to be using a product called Bleachbit, which has been around for a very, very long time. The download itself is extremely safe. The program itself is exceptionally powerful. So all the usual caveats exist. So if you're not too sure, make a backup of your system, system restore points, ideally back up your files to a separate drive because this program is very powerful and you can break your system by using it if you don't know what you're doing. So with that said, let's head over to the computer and take a closer look. So here we are on the bleachbit.org website. So this is where I would suggest to get it from. And you can just click on the download link there. If you want to go through, you can basically go through and read all the uh, information about it on the site, what it can do, etc. And there's also a forum. So if you should you get any problems or you have any suggestions, you can join their forum to do so. So let's go to download. There's a lot of pop-ups and things on this particular site as there tends to be with free software. Now this can be got from GitHub as well or directly from their site. You can also view the source code. It is completely open source. So you're more than welcome to do that. So on the download section, if you go down to the installation packages, there's actually a couple of versions. There is a standalone version, which you can use portably on a USB drive for a toolkit, that kind of thing. Or you can download the executable to install it onto either Linux or Windows machines. And also if you're running other systems such as BlackBerry or email servers, Mac OS, etc. You can do that and there's also old versions and you can view the source code. We want the Windows version, so we'll click on Windows and then you get the option for either the installer, which is the best option for most people, or the portable version, which you can then put onto a USB stick, those types of things. Also, you've got the zipped version, so if your firewall blocks it downloading, then you can do it from there. So, let's download the exe and it'll ask you where you want to save it to so we're going to save it to our windows desktop obviously you can save it to wherever you choose click on save very small download so that is done so now we can close this window we no longer need that so here is the executable to install the program so we'll just double click on that one and we'll be asked for language so you choose whichever is appropriate to you i'm going to use english and you get the usual thing, so asking you to install it, click on next, accept the license agreement, click on next. You can choose to have it installed for all users of the computer or just for yourself. I'm going to choose all users and click next. You'll also get the user account control to make sure you want it to be installed, just click on yes. And again, it's going to ask for the language, the installer, click on next, again, Feels like we're going around in circles a little bit. And it asks you for a destination folder. So I'm just going to use the default one and click on next. And it asks you if you want to install shortcuts, etc. I'm just going to leave the defaults and let it install. So when that's done, click on next. And then you get the option if you want to, to run bleach bit, which uh, we're going to go ahead and do. So click on finish. And then we get greeted by the user interface, which is actually pretty clean. There's uh, not a great deal going on here. There's some key things in the top section. So you've got options for preview, clean, and abort. You've also got obviously minimize, maximize, etc. And in this section here, you've got some other options for other things you can do. So such as you can shred files. So you can point it towards a individual file and shred it entirely. So it basically overwrites the file. You can also do that for entire folders. You can also shred paths from your Windows clipboard. Also, you've got the options for wiping clean space. So that will essentially find any free space on your system where there probably is remnants of files, but will actually kind of write ones and zeros to it to erase that. It does take a long time, so do be mindful of that. Uh, make chaff is basically a way of making dummy files. Uh, we won't go into that in this particular instance. And you've also got your shred settings and quit. Your preferences, system information, help, etc. So I'm going to go into preferences first of all. And we're going to define some of those. So these are some of the things you may want to do for yourself. In the four tabs here, you've got the general, so you can check for updates. Also for beta releases, uh, if you want to do that, you can do, but obviously at your own risk. You can also download and update cleaners for the community or from the community. So this actually adds additional cleaners 
two bleach bit, which gives you a little bit more flexibility. Whether you want to do that, that is entirely up to you. It does give you a lot more options, but in those options, there also comes more added dangers for incorrectly deleting files potentially. So yeah, do be a bit mindful of that. Uh, you've also got to hide the irrelevant cleaners. So if there is a cleaner built into Bleachbit or any of the downloads, if they're not relevant to your system, so you don't have something like maybe Discord or Chrome or whatever installed, it won't show you it in the list of items that you can actually clean. Also, there's a slightly dangerous one here, or potentially if you are security conscious, there is the option to overwrite contents of files to prevent recovery. So if the files are removed, it will completely prevent it from being recovered. Also, you've got exit after cleaning. So if you just want to click on a button, let it do its thing, and then for it to close down after, you can choose that option. You've also got the uh, confirm before delete. I would suggest leaving that enabled. You've also got the file sizes. You can change it so how they're actually shown between being 1024 bytes versus the 1000 bytes. Also, remember the window geometry. So that is the, uh, the size of this particular window. You can do that so when you close it it reopens and it looks the same also you can show debug messages you have an option for dark mode or the uh, eye piercing normal windows mode i think dark mode is going to be more appropriate you've also got the windows 10 theme you can use and you can also auto detect the language in the custom section so these are locations that can be selected for deletion so you can add specific files or add specific folders when it comes to drives if you've got multiple drives included, then when it uses the overwrite free space option, you can choose to either have those included or not. That is entirely up to you. If you want it to run faster, you can remove all of these locations so it won't do the overwrite for free space. You do get an option to disable that as well actually in the interface. So you can do it from here or in the actual program itself. And also you can whitelist files and folders and also you can remove them as well so i think we're pretty much okay i think that is exactly what we want to do so let's click on close preferences are fine this is just using the standard ones so now we've got the window down this left hand side so these are all your options and it gives you details of what is included in each subfolder so if you want to you can kind of close that down so it doesn't take up so much room that again is entirely up to you how you have it laid out so if you click on one of those, it gives you all the options in there as well. But I'm going to expand them for the first time because we want to see what is actually going on. And we do actually want to make some modifications to the default scan. So those are all expanded now. Okay, great. So they're all unchecked at the moment. So if you want to just click on that, the deep scan, you can do that. And you can basically go through. It will ask you about all of the options as you go through, if they are something which could be uh, potentially dangerous. Again, you can just choose all of these things, such as this one here. So the Discord one's fine because that gets rid of your cache, cookies, history, and uh, vacuums up after. The Google Chrome one, and the same for Edge as well, there will be a thing coming up saying warning regarding Google Chrome passwords. So it will actually delete your saved passwords. So if you're maybe using this on a system that you are building and you're going to sell to someone else after, like you're doing a flip system and you are setting up things, you're maybe putting in usernames and passwords, then this actually might be beneficial for you. Again, that choice is yours. Click on OK there. So if you do want to keep your passwords, then you just basically uncheck it. So in this Google Chrome section here where we've got passwords, just remove that section there and it's going to keep your passwords intact. So saves you having to log into sites every single time. Again, as we said, all of these individual things. So if you want to delete the cache, that's great. The cookies, DOM storage, form history, Google Chrome history, etc. You can just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to scroll down. Internet Explorer will choose all of those. And Microsoft Edge. Again, we're going to get that message saying about passwords. So I'm going to go down and change that. So I want to keep the passwords in Edge if there's any saved. But all the other things you're pretty safe to get rid of. And then we can go down to the system settings. So you may have more settings for programs here, depending on what you've got installed, if it's picked up by the software. In the system section, again, you've got things like the clipboard, you've got custom free disk space, logs, memory dump, etc. all this kind of stuff. So you can choose whether or not you want to select those. Again, if you click on something, if there is some sort of extra warning, it will pop up. So this one here, warning, 
Regarding system free disk space, this option is very slow because what it will do is it will look at the free space on the disk after and then try to erase that as well if there's any fragmented files in there. So if click on OK and I'm going to get rid of that to speed things up. If you want to leave it on, more than welcome to, but be warned, it does take a long time and potentially could add additional wear to your SSD or your NVMe drive. So next we've got Windows Defender. Obviously, if you've got Windows Defender, this will be included. So you can choose all those. So backup files, history, logs, quarantine files, etc., and temporary files. It'll get rid of all those. And for Windows Explorer, again, you can choose all those. And again, we're getting a warning message. Warning regarding Windows Explorer. Recent documents list. This option will reset pinned locations in the quick access to their defaults. So if you've got any shortcuts set up or pinned locations in quick access, in Windows Explorer, those will be reset to the defaults. So choose that, I'm gonna click OK. And again, it's gonna go through and get rid of things like the shell bags. Uh, this will reset the position of desktop icons. So if you don't mind that, click OK. And also thumbnails. So this will restart Windows Explorer. So that is basically just getting rid of thumbnail cache. So I'm gonna click OK for that one as well. And that I think is pretty much it. So we've selected almost everything other than we're keeping our passwords for Google Chrome, which obviously if you want to, you can do. And the same for Edge. And also at the moment, we're not gonna be using the free disk space section. Again, any of these, if you just click on them, it'll give you an idea of what is actually being done anyway. Again, free disk space, free disk space, overwrite free disk space to hide deleted files. So you may or may not need to do that. It's a bit pointless, it doesn't save you any space. It's almost like defragging the drive, but also overwriting as it does it. So that is pretty much it. We are kind of where we want to be. Now I'm gonna expand this a little bit so we can see the files a little better. So if you're not too sure what is actually gonna be deleted when you click on clean, you can do a preview. So we'll click on preview, and there you go. It's gonna scan through all of those individual things we've selected. And it's also now gonna put in a size of what is actually gonna be saved. So you can go through and see exactly how much is gonna be saved per section. Or you can look at the bottom here at the end of the log. So disk space to be recovered over 2.21 gigabytes. And that will remove 15,455 files. So that's pretty good. That is gonna get rid of a lot of junk. And again, you can see the individual things there if you scroll down through. So if you're happy with your selection, all you do is click on clean, which we'll do now. And it's going to give you the warning there again. Are you sure you want to permanently delete files according to the selected operations? The actual files that will be deleted may have changed since you ran the preview. So if there's a little bit of time between the preview and you doing other things on the computer, it may differ. So it's just a warning for that. We're pretty happy with this. So I'm going to click on delete. And now it's going to go through. You may get some error messages. If you do, they are going to show up in red. If you've got things open so if you've got google chrome open and you're trying to clean chrome obviously it's going to throw an error because it's open and the same goes for other programs discord etc if they're open and active so you may want to close programs to get a uh, a better clean so in here we say now disk space recovered 1.76 gigabytes and that is the amount of files deleted and also we've got some errors so if we scroll it through there's the errors in red so you can see what those are for sometimes it's because it's windows defender and it's running in the background so you can't actually delete the files whilst it's in use so what it'll do it will flag those for deletion later so as you can see there access denied when flagging file for later delete so again some files can't be deleted because of what is running you could potentially close down defender or the program which is causing you problems that is entirely up to you or run the program actually in safe mode potentially that might be an option for you but that is pretty much it. So we've cleaned up all our files, we've recovered some space, got rid of a lot of junk, cache, cookies, etc. So this should make your system feel a little bit more snappy. Obviously, depending on how clean it is to begin with, that's always gonna be the thing. But if you do this on a semi-regular basis, it's gonna be absolutely great. And also, you can also create a task. So this runs on a periodic basis. I'm a little bit more cautious about that, so I want to run it manually, so I'm gonna run it manually, but if you want to, you can set up a Windows task to make this happen maybe once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever you wanna do, your own particular choice. But I think it's safer personally if you do it manually, and also then you can go in and change your settings. Now, if we close the program down, 
which I'm going to do now. I've closed the program down. We're now going to reopen Bleach Bits. And again, you get the user account control. And as you can see, it's memorized our settings. So once you've got your settings dialed in exactly how you want them, then it will actually remember them. If you want to change anything, obviously you can do and make any amendments that you feel necessary. Again, lots of choices for you. What I will do now as well, if we go in and actually go into the preferences section and we'll go into general and I'll just show you the difference. So if we download and update cleaners from the community, so we'll enable that. We do need to close the program and restart it to enable that. So if we close that now, we'll reopen bleach bit. Again, user account control is going to pop up. And now if we look through, it says now the WinApp 2 INI was downloaded. So these are all going to be pretty much the same. So we can leave those or minimize those a little bit. So they're not taking up so much room. But now we've got more options. So we've got the Google update, Microsoft Office, OneDrive, Qt Framework, Squirrel Windows. So again, this can just remove the temporary files or log files. Also from Edge, you've got some more options there. So if you want to, you can go ahead and choose all of them. Same with games. So if there are like 3D Mark logs, Dying Light logs, etc., whatever you've got installed on your system, you can actually get it to clean those things up as well. Again, we've got Google Chrome there, extra cache, Chromium histories, etc. So you can go a lot deeper should you wish to. Some other things as well. So if you want to clean up a, a real bunch of space, if you've got an AMD graphics card or your AMD chipset or you're on NVIDIA or Intel, you can actually go ahead and choose those as well. So if you've got other programs which create logs or have got temporary files, so we can get rid of those. And now, actually we'll do real tech as well. So now from those, if we do another preview, we'll see how much it can clean this time. So now we can actually reclaim an additional 703 megabytes, and that is going to be part of the AMD folders and also the NVIDIA installers. This is actually a pretty clean system anyway, because I tend to remove those things. But if you don't, you may find your NVIDIA one being kind of 5, 10 gigabytes, if not more. Same for AMD. So yeah, this is a pretty clean one, but your mileage may vary. Again, you don't have to choose these if you don't want to. Just go through, choose which ones you want. You can select loads and loads of things there if you want to. And again, it's just going to be temporary files, Windows updates, that sort of thing. So again, if we choose that one, we'll add that to the list and we will do another preview and see how much difference that's going to make. So Windows updates pretty clean, but it's going to remove another 175 megabytes. So if space is at a premium on your system, then it might be worth doing. Also things like you can get it to automatically do the recycle bin as well to clean log files and also items in the recycle bin. Also things like Windows search, security settings, all that kind of stuff. Loads and loads of choices here. So if you want to choose to do that, you can do, but obviously make sure you're aware of what it is you're actually deleting. So there we go, uh, potentially a extremely powerful tool for removing uh, basically old unused files from your system or just clearing up space. If you're maybe using a smaller SSD and you're thinking, well, I want to install a game, I haven't got enough room you can potentially save a load of room here to maybe install your games or store more photos, files, whatever it is you want to do. Anyway, there you go. There is a look at Bleach Bit. Hopefully you found the video interesting. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, feel free to click on the subscribe button. And also, if you do, don't forget to hit the channel notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.